this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use ResearchRabbit to be able to organize your papers within Notion. So we're gonna connect ResearchRabbit and Notion together. If you don't know about ResearchRabbit, I will have videos linked above to some just general information for how to use ResearchRabbit. But ResearchRabbit is essentially a software that allows you to easily find relevant papers um, and continually getting an updated bank of relevant papers. However, ResearchRabbit isn't the best for organizing those papers. And one of the best ways I like to organize papers is through Notion. So I have this journal article organization template that you can easily get. I'll have a link in the description below, both to the original video showing you how to use this template overall, and then also um, to actually get the template itself. And so this template essentially allows you to really easily organize the information that is in references, set dates to read them, be able to see what you need to read this week, and be able to easily organize your references into the papers that you might be writing over here. So check out this video if you're interested in it. You can also just remake this template yourself if you would like to, um, if you know Notion well enough. What is really exciting is I have actually updated this template so that you can easily move things between ResearchRabbit and into this template and organize from there. So if you're working in ResearchRabbit, you don't have to move things over manually. You can easily just upload things into your Notion template. So to do this, we are going to go to our literature organization template and we are going to view it as a database. And so you can see here, this default view was the original um, database. And now we have the research rabbit view. And this is where you'll want to add things in um, whenever you're adding in from research rabbit. So you can actually copy and paste into this table. But today I'm gonna show you a little bit more of a sophisticated way where we're actually gonna merge this data together. So if we take one of these um, collections, so let's say we start with my steroids collection. If we take this collection and I want to have all of these papers available in my literature organization template in Notion, it's actually really simple to be able to do this. So what we're going to do is we are going to export these papers and we're going to export them as a CSV. So once we do that, it is going to download our papers as a CSV and we can open them up here. So here we can see that what it gives us is it's going to give us the DOI, the PubMed ID for it, um, this ARXIV ID, the title, abstract, authors, journal, and year. So this is what you have available to you. And I'm just gonna show you first how to get this information within Notion, and then we're gonna do a little bit more advanced things um, that you're going to be able to do. So we now want to merge that database into this literature organization database. So we're gonna come up to these three buttons up here and click merge with CSV. And it is going to ask you to find it. This is the one we just pulled down and I am going to click open. So now it's going to upload, it's going to import, and it's going to merge in. So this is what this now looks like, and you can do this no matter how many uh, papers that you have, you will be able to do this. Um, so without even doing anything, it's automatically gonna pull these into the year, journal, authors, abstract, title. The PubMed ID, if there is no ID, it will fill in a zero here. So just to let you know that. And the DOI over here. Now, something that is really nice about this template is if you scroll over here, this will automatically convert what Research Rabbit gives you as the DOI into an actual link. So all you have to do is copy and then paste this in and it will actually take you to that paper. Um, so just to let you know, you don't have to deal with, you know, trying to figure out how to find the DOI link. It already does that in here. So this is just the basics and you can do this again with however many papers you have in your collection. So if you have a massive research rabbit collection, you can easily import all of those into your literature organization template now. So let's do a couple more advanced things. So one thing that you might really want to do if you have a specific template 
is you might want to go ahead and pull in all of the topics with the CSV. Instead of now having to go in and mark all of these as steroids, I might just want to have them all pulled in. The other thing you might wanna be able to do is go ahead and fill in this synopsis. So if you have either information stored in a different place or anything like that, you might wanna bring in this synopsis as well. So we're actually going to delete out all of these papers here, and we're gonna restart. So here is what we imported from ResearchRabbit or exported from ResearchRabbit. And now if we want to get this information into our literature organization template, but let's say we also want the topics and the synopsis brought in automatically as well. So the first thing we need to do is add a couple columns into this CSV. So the one column we need to add is topics and it does need to be plural. Um, if you have topic, it will not sync correctly. And then synopsis. So this needs to be spelled correctly. So I'm just going to double check. Both of those match the columns in here. So topics, plural, and synopsis there. And let's make sure that matches. Synopsis. Okay. Um, so now what we can do is we can add in any topic tags we want with a comma in between them. So all of these are steroids and um, IMS, I am ability. So I can just click and drag those down. Now they're all going to have these tags on it. If there are specific ones I'm specifically interested in having additional things, I can do that as well. So if there's certain LC ones, i um, trying to see if there are any. So like this one, if I wanted this to also have LC on it, I could just have a comma and click LC. So then I can also add in a synopsis. So if you've created these in other databases, you can just include those in. If not, you can actually write them out in here. Or if you just want to make a few comments or other things, you can actually include that in here. So if I want to look at this one, I can say um, this synopsis, I'm gonna make this bigger so we can actually look across these rows easily. So here I could say, um, This paper examined CCS um, of steroids between different labs and platforms. So why is this synopsis important? Because the title is not going to use my words. So if I wanna search for this paper later, I might use the words different labs or different platforms. I might not use the word interlaboratory because I might forget it called it that. So what this is basically letting me do is if I search different labs in the future, this paper will actually show up in my search in Notion where it would not show up if, if I don't include, you know, the synopsis here because it can only search for those words in these papers. So that's kind of what the synopsis is letting us do. Um, and you can put kind of any, didn't mean to do that, you can put any notes in here that you want. I'm just going to do one synopsis for now. So now what we want to do is save this because obviously if we don't save it, it's going to pull in the previous file. The other thing we need to do before we import this in is add these topics into our topics in Notion. If you don't have these as tags available in Notion, it will not be able to sync this column together. So we need to add steroids, IMS, and LC. So let's go back into our Notion and we are going to go to our topics and edit property. So you can see here I have topic one, topic two, topic three. We're just gonna click add an option. We're going to add in steroids. We're going to add in IMS and we're going to add in LC. So that's as simple as it is. You just wanna make sure that these exist in Notion's data frame before you try and merge the CSV together. And they do need to exist exactly. So if I had steroid instead of steroids, it would not recognize that and it would actually add it in as a separate column. So now we're going to merge with that same CSV. Just click it, open. It's gonna upload and import it in. And we have all of our papers just like we did before. But now it filled in this synopsis here. So you can see how you can quickly bring in the synopsis here. And it filled in our topics here. So steroids and IMS, steroids, IMS, and LC. 
So this can kind of show you the power of using this. You can massively tag papers and other things by just pulling them down into ResearchRabbit, editing them in a CSV, and then uploading them into this template or a template you create yourself. So now if we go into the dashboard, instead of looking at the individual view, you can see down here, I have this separated by topic and by year. So you can obviously clean this up, but we can see kind of the papers by year and when they were done. So we can see because they're in two different topics, they're showing up in both of these topics down here as well. And we can look at more groups and here we start seeing more of the papers being shown. So this is just kind of the power of how you're able to now organize this as you're just kind of looking as a timeline view and as a network view. Essentially, if you use ResearchRabbit, this is giving you a way to kind of look at both of that at once. Um, you can also edit this as far as you want yourself. This just gives you the basis for how to start being able to easily import in from ResearchRabbit and edit these papers and organize them in Notion as well. So if you're interested in this, make sure you click the links below to be able to get this updated template. If you already have this template, you have access to the update automatically. So just sign into where you got this template and there will be um, lessons in there to teach you both how to move over your stuff from the previous template into this new template and get access to this new template. Um, if you have any problems with that, please email me um, and I will make sure that you get squared away as well. And if you are stressing out about what papers you need to read and how to actually start getting your project going, don't forget to download my 30 day research jumpstart guide. It's going to help you figure out what papers you need to read, create novel ideas and generate research projects based on those ideas. I hope this video was super helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next videos.